Hello, everybody. Welcome to Trend Talks, the supply chain initiative in which we share lessons learned and visions of key market leaders in our industry and in order to accelerate the renewable energy transition. I'm proud that today I'm talking with Michael Libri. And Michael is the founder of Bloom Energy, New Energy Finance, and is still a senior contributor to this um, platform. Um, he has a tremendous CV, and I'm not going to go into all the details, but if you go and impress yourself with reading the, what is mentioned on the LinkedIn page, please do so. He's a very visionary and outspeaking keynote speaker on topics like renewable energy and mobility. Um, please, Michael, welcome to this uh, Trend Talks interview. Thank you very much, Edwin. And you forgot to mention, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of what you do with Solar Plaza, and I've uh, attended a few times and been privileged to speak. All right. Thanks, Michael. Well, let's take it ahead with a question, and I, I want to hear your visionary thoughts on that. How do you think this, this current COVID crisis is going to impact the future of renewable energy? And uh, into your opinion, and also take into account you know, low renewable energy and energy pricing, etc.? Oh, so that's an absolutely huge question uh, that you've posed there. Um, but let's start with the long term. Long term, I am extremely optimistic. In fact, I become, uh, in a sense, more optimistic because some of the things we're seeing today uh, in terms of energy demand, in terms of behaviors, in terms of very low uh, interest rates uh, are going to actually accelerate the shift to clean energy. In the short term, I mean, we're still in the middle of a health pandemic, and then we'll have the economic uh, crisis to deal with, with very low uh, oil and gas prices, which is going to be an extremely difficult, traumatic period for everybody, including renewable energy uh, developers uh, and, and other participants in our industry. So a difficult few years, but then I think uh, some really uh, interesting opportunities opening up. Yeah, so you say a, a, a difficult few years, which is already a substantial amount of time. If you think few years, might be, most people might think, you know, in a couple of months, things might reopen and be back again. No, I think we've got to be realistic about how long this is going to take. So we are already seeing some countries able to open up, but nobody bounces back to 100% of economic activity, uh, setting aside the question of second waves or uh, or, or, or how long it might take to get a vaccine. Um, the economies that bounce back, they bounce back, but social distancing adds an enormous amount of friction to an economy. So whether it's just how many people you can get on a bus or a metro train or in an aeroplane, uh, or, or just the willingness of people to undertake business travel, there are whole industries that are going to really suffer for some time. Who's gonna to go to a crowded cinema? Or who's going to go on a, uh, who's going to book a long holiday? Or if somebody has, maybe they've been furloughed, maybe their job bounces back, but do they go straight out and buy a car? No, there's going to be a, a, a hangover from this. Uh, there'll be a, a bounce back in the, in the near term, but it will be, let's call it a 80, 90% bounce back. And then there'll be a few years when balance sheets are weak. There'll be a lot of friction from social distancing and all of these measures we will have to uh, maintain and then eventually there will be a vaccine we all hope and there will be uh, adaptation innovation and the economy but I think it's going to take I'm going to say three or four years for us to look back and say okay we can now kind of start to think of that as over now yeah. and if you look in particular on the financing for new renewable energy projects do you have any thoughts on that well, yes, what's interesting is there's so much focus at the moment on the low oil price and the low gas price. But what we also need to uh, remember or to bear in mind is that interest rates are also very, very low and they're going to stay low. Right? There's going to be uh, uh, the stimulus programs, there's going to be fiscal and monetary stimulus thrown at the economies. And then uh, uh, even when that's over, as that's ratcheted back, interest rates are staying low, possibly for the next decade. Um, and so you've got this very um, uh, you know, difficult period of very uh, aggressive price competition. But don't forget that clean energy uh, is all about the interest rates and the interest rates are going to be very low uh, as well. So I think that it's a difficult time, but I also see how you work your way through it and get back to building projects. All right. 
Good, thanks, uh, Michael, for that clear answer. And um, I'm going to go to the question of our, one of our previous guests, and he was asking the, the chain question in our trend talks. Um, how do you see the, the oil and gas the oil and gas companies going to make the transition? Well, I think that the oil and gas companies are in a lot more um, trouble and turmoil than than even they perhaps realize at this point. There's a lot of focus on uh, the U.S. shale oil players and saying, well, you know, there's clearly a number of them that are going to go into chapter 11. They're going to be bankrupt. You can't uh, be profitable with a $20, $25 oil price. But I think that the restructuring in oil and gas is going to go much, much beyond that. Uh, I don't see the oil price bouncing back for those three or four years that I talked about. I think we're going to be in a low oil price regime. Um, let's call it 30 or $40 for some number of years. And if, you know, there are big oil companies, the majors that are going to hurt much more uh, during that period than perhaps we thought. They are leveraged, they're carrying debt. It's gonna be very, very painful. We've already seen uh, uh, dividends being cut. And I think we're going, to see, um, we're going to see oil producing nations getting into really substantial fiscal trouble. We've got big nations. Saudi Arabia has a fiscal break even of over $80 a barrel. I'm not yeah. sure we're going to see that for five years, seven years, 10 years, who knows, right? And I think that we're going to see some really big um, uh, restructurings, potentially at the, uh, potentially countries needing to go to the IMF uh, for support, uh, who normally would have relied on their oil income. Uh, and the industry, the oil and gas industry is going to be transformed. It's going to be one of those periods where oil and gas is transformed out of recognition. And it may bounce back, prices may bounce back because the amount of exploration is so low and will remain so low for some years, we may see another price spike. Uh, but one thing we do know, the cost of capital in oil and gas is soaring as we speak. It's soaring as we speak. Investors have had a really, really bad shock and that memory is not gonna go away anytime soon. All right, well, that's a nice answer. To finish this short interview, Michael, uh, what is the question that you would like to have answered for my next guest? Do you have a question on top of your mind that you think is interesting that you would like to have answered? Okay, so if I summarize the question that we all face, it's essentially, does the world now focus on building back the economic structures, the behaviors, the spirit, the zeitgeist that we had in December last year, in 2019, or do we leap forward or change or build back better, whatever you want to call it, do we actually go for something different that holistically solves a number of systemic problems that we already had, but we're finding it difficult to get traction on? So my question is, what is gonna dominate? Building back or building forward? Are we going to face a paradigm shift um, in many ways, as you said? Yeah. Well, thanks, Michael, for this short interview. I uh, wish you a nice day and look forward to seeing you live at one of our events again. I shall very much look forward to that.